Hello everyone, welcome back again to your chapter 9 series of uh, lectures. So we finished the joint venture in the previous lecture and now what we're going to do is now we're going to jump into the deferred income taxes and how does it get applied in the business combination. So, so far uh, we have been ignoring the deferred income taxes but we do look at the income tax impact of the various transactions that were taking place uh, for the intercompany such as when we were eliminating the uh, the gain on uh, gain and gain on loss on the unrealized gain and loss and we when we reverse it or we eliminate those ones we look at the net impact and we see that the the taxes are applied and we ended up creating deferred income tax assets so now how does it work practically uh, is that uh, you either be paying more or less taxes depending on what kind of eliminations entries we are we are doing on our on our reporting period. So, so we have to look at how these assets exist and and what are the tax values. So, we're not going to go into so much depth. This topic is actually broader, and if you ever work in a public practice, such as PricewaterhouseCoopers or uh, Andreas and Young or any accounting, big accounting firm, they have a one particular department that will do the calculation on the on the deferred income taxes. So, so how does it work is that when the companies file taxes, they may have different tax calculation that goes behind the scene. So you ended up uh, doing the calculation about deferred income taxes. So you determine if their company is paying more or less taxes and then depending on what the difference is and then either be the differences be on temporary or a, or a, or a permanent differences based on that you end up creating deferred income tax so you have done a course in intermediate accounting where we talked about how we calculate the deferred income tax assets or deferred income tax liabilities uh, so now what we're looking at is we're looking at how does the business combination affect the deferred income tax assets or deferred income tax liabilities. So, so far we have been talking about how does the income tax uh, gets calculated. So whenever there's unrealized gain uh, that we reverse, we ended up creating the under, uh, deferred income tax asset. And then how does that deferred income tax gets asset being reflected on the financial statement? We show that as an asset under the current assets for the consolidation purposes. And then the same thing happened is that if there is uh, any liabilities that may arise, if there was a loss that we reverse and uh, will end up creating deferred income tax liabilities as well. So those things has to be disclosed on the financial statement and you have to provide a full working papers how these calculations will are calculated and provide the detail for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to touch base on the different topics. Uh, and then see how these calculation works and then we definitely see what kind of disclosures are also required in regards to the deferred income taxes. So the first thing that we have is uh, it talks about at a, any point in time there may be a differences, differences that exist between the tax values and the carrying value of those assets in the financial statement. If it does it ended up arising the deferred income tax issues. So such differences occurs when the equity differential is allocated in the business combination. So now we talk about the business combination. So we know that anytime this controls happens, we ended up calculating the acquisition differentials and then we allocate that among different assets. So when we do that, what happened is we're creating values that doesn't exist on the tax side. So it obviously will have at some tax basis and then it will be shown on a separate financial statement and it will have the income tax implications as well. So when this exists, uh, but uh, no tax basis since each company is filed separately, no consolidated financial statements for income tax purposes. So there will be income taxes that will be applicable, uh, but it will not be shown up anywhere in the income tax returns. So, so but these differences are only temporary differences. So now these temporary differences in carrying value for both book purposes compared to a tax purposes give rise to deferred income taxes which will be recognized only on the consolidated financial statement. So under the RFRS 12, the temporary differences between the carrying value of the asset liabilities 
must be accounted for a deferred income taxes. So IA 12 defines two types of temporary differences. One that is deductible for temporary differences, which will rise an income tax deduction, which will end up creating a deferred income tax assets. So what happened is you create an income tax differences and then that future tax deduction. So what happened is you pay more taxes now. That means you're going to have more deductions in the future. So therefore it will create that asset. And as, as we reverse those assets, uh, as we use those deductions in the future period, we'll start reducing that asset as well. Then the other one is when you have give rise to a future taxable income. So now if, what if they, we reverse any losses that we have? So technically you didn't pay any taxes now, but you may have to pay the taxes in the future. That means that's a future income tax. So in that case, you create a deferred income tax liabilities. And then as you recognize those losses or uh, then you will happen is you will have those taxes reversed back. So you reduce your liabilities so you may have paid more taxes now, but you will reverse those liabilities in the future. So now there is uh, some kind of uh, notes that are provided. If the asset book value is greater than the tax values, then what happened? You're creating a deferred income tax assets. And the same thing happens with the liabilities as well. If the liabilities book value is higher than the tax values, then you still going to do is defer create a deferred income tax assets and it's opposite for the deferred income tax liabilities if the asset book value is greater than the tax value you're going to end up creating a deferred income tax liabilities and the same applies with the liabilities if the liabilities values is lesser than the tax values then you're going to end up with the deferred income tax liabilities so now the difference between the consolidated book value and the individual company tax values gives rise to a deferred income tax assets. So that is the only reason for you to have a deferred income tax assets or liabilities because you are having two different values for accounting and tax purposes. And that's always going to be the case when you are doing the uh, doing uh, doing the corporate corporation income tax. So you have different tax values and you have a different financial values. So when we doing uh, when we are doing uh, consolidations, what happened is we calculate those differences, we calculate those values, and determine what the new value of those deferred income tax asset or liability going to be, and whatever the new value is, the difference need to be recognized in the current period. So the way that I think of this is that we will reverse what was the deferred income tax asset liability that exists in the previous year. We reverse that. And then we ended up creating a new deferred income tax asset or liabilities, and then we record that. And obviously, when we're doing this, obviously we're looking at the net impact was shown up in your current financial statement. So this is a good example where we have a deferred income tax assets, and there was a different value previous year, and then, then the value changes at the end of the year. So what we do is we call that the old deferred income tax liabilities and the new income tax deferred liabilities. So what we do in the process is we reverse the previous one and then we record the new one. Okay, the new one included in the acquisition differentials allocation therefore goodwill will increase. Obviously that when we reverse it, it will do the net impact automatically. A business combination may increase the future likelihood the operation loss carry forward. So now that's something new as well. So you haven't, uh, we have not talked about it previously. So one of that reason for the companies to acquire companies and the losses is that they may able to use the losses that being, uh, that's being incurred by that company, and you can use that losses and reverse. Uh, you uh, sorry, you can use those losses in your existing companies if they are in the same business. So in that case, what happened is even though you combine a company on the law with the losses, you may have some future benefits. So if those future benefits exist and you are going to use that, obviously those need to be recognized in the income tax assets. So if you're planning of using those losses and carrying it back, therefore you may have to recall those assets in the current period because you may end up using those deferred income tax. Uh, so you were able to carry that back and then have some kind of an income tax savings. 
So if the previously unrecognized operation losses carry forward to the subsidies, may recognize the time of business combination as a part of the allocation acquisition differential. So if you recognize that and you have the potential that you're going to use that in the future, you may want to allocate that to your acquisition differential and realize that benefit at the same time. So, but if there's operation losses carry forward previously recognized by the subsidy as a deferred tax asset will be allocated as stand. So it, we don't need to do anything because it will be used in the comp in the subsidy itself. The allocation of the equity differential to addition deferred income tax reduces liabilities. So obviously, if we determine that there is a benefit to utilize those losses, uh, then obviously it will do impact the good work because we may allocate that asset in the in, in the business combination and recognize that as we use them. If we do that, obviously it will impact the good work because if we allocate that to another asset, which is the deferred income tax asset, the good work value will decrease by that amount as well. So it is good that you recognize those those uh, deferred income tax assets at the time of the business combination instead of waiting up until the future date. So now talking about the disclosures. So when the consolidated financial statement of large and diversified companies are prepared, saving significant amount of detail about the profitability of different products and uh, different products and sources. I think this is talk about talks about the consolidation of this is segment disclosures. Okay, so what we can do is we can wrap up uh, the the lecture for chapter nine because this is this is where it ends in regards to the disclosures of sorry regards to the deferred income taxes. So after this, we are going to jump into the disclosures about the segments. Okay, uh, they did not talk specifically about the disclosures for the deferred income taxes, but as per I know that in, in regards to the business combination. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a business combination or, no, or not. When there was there's a deferred income tax, uh, deferred income tax exists. There's a diff, uh, full disclosure that's required by the companies to provide how the income tax calculations are, are calculated, and if the deferred income tax asset exists, what is the reason for those deferred income taxes? And you may have to provide some kind of a disclosures in regards to those asset and liabilities uh, that is created for deferred income taxes. So in the next slide, we are jumping into the next topic, which is the segment disclosures. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to stop the video now because I think it's good to have the deferred income tax uh, lecture separately. And then we'll jump into the segment disclosures in the last video and we'll wrap up chapter nine in the next video. Okay. Take care, everyone. Until I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.